We started our whole discussion on these pipeline field joint coatings with Neil Webb last time, exploring some of the unique challenges associated with the practicalities of coating field joints. Most notably, of course, difficulties when you're just actually working in the field. And these concerns and challenges were reiterated in our discussion last time when Juan Paul Locke from Chirimeli Construction joined us, and we took an in-depth look at hot applied coatings. We spent most of our time talking about polymer modified membranes. And today we're stepping away from the heat a little, and we're going to be focusing on cold applied tapes. And we are so privileged to have Ishmael Sheikh with us. He is the Managing Director and Technical Director of Denso, and he's made time in his calendar to join us today. Now, Ishmael has a technical background, and he spent many years at the laboratory workbench. So I'm certain that influence will definitely filter into our conversation today, and we're all going to be learning so much. So welcome, Ishmael, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Vanessa. I'm technology neutral with regards to concerning fuel joint coatings. Every coating does have its time and place, from the very, very newest viscoelastics to the tried and tested petrol artem tapes. Now, there are a wide range of fuel joint cold applied tapes are available. They all tend to have their strengths and weaknesses, but share certain advantages relative to other types of fuel joint coatings, especially concerning surface preparation, ease of application, and the absence of hot work. I think last week we talked about that some of the challenges with the heat, and we'll certainly focus in shortly on how, relatively speaking, easy they are to use. But I think it might be a worthwhile contribution to our conversation today if we just have a brief look at some of the history of cold tapes. Would you like to share some with us? Yes, definitely. So cold applied anti-corrosion tapes for the protection of buried metal pipes were originally developed in Germany in 1926, so nearly okay. 100 years ago. The ease of application compared to methods then in use, which were such as flooding or flood coating with cold tar or bitumen. So these newer tapes, their factory control thickness and their quality firmly established as use as a preferred coating of field joint application. Now we have seen a huge worldwide growth in the infrastructure of gas, water, and sewage. And we also have seen the massive development of oil, petroleum, and chemical industries. This now calls for the installation of extensive and reliable transmission and distribution networks. Mm -hmm. The safe and economic operation of such expansive capital equipment has made ever increasing demands on protective coatings and has led to the increasing coating diversity. And it's some of that that we're honing in on today. Now, Ishmael, I know that many of our audience have had some experience with cold applied tapes, and by that, I don't exclusively mean a band-aids for the sore finger. Can we talk generally about some of the tapes and how they work? Indeed, anti-corrosion cold applied tapes have successfully maintained their position as a convenient and effective field applied coating. And over a third of major pipelines worldwide are protected with tape coatings. There are now many ranges of tapes now available to meet an ever-growing range of technical and commercial requirements. And let's look at some of those requirements. What, what is important when we look at cold applied tapes that are being used? Let's not focus on line pipe at all. So let's just focus in on field joint repairs and what we would want our tape system to be able to do or what are the properties it should exhibit? So there are differing views on the required properties of a cold applied tape system and the interpretation of the test results. But no matter what type of external protective coating is used, the function of the tape is to closely adhere to the substrate and form a physical barrier to, of course, prevent the pipe wall from its corrosive environment. To do this, a coating must definitely satisfy certain key requirements. Number one, the tape must, of course, have good application properties. You would need relatively low skilled labor. It's, uh, it's no use you have a tape and you've got to have high skill labor to actually apply this. The tape must display adequate adhesion. The tape has to, of course, stick to the substrate. There's no point you having a tape uh, that's just going to come off the substrate. The backing and the compound must be chemically stable. 
The tape must adequately resist damaged and soil stresses. And something that I think you are a lot more familiar with is the tape must demonstrate a high resistance to, of course, cathodic despondment. And, and that's important, especially when there's uh, cathodic protection installed on the pipe. Now, you've mentioned briefly that it must be chemically stable and must adhere. And adhering to the surface means that the surface must be ready for it. Now, in our last couple of, of discussions, the very hot topic, if I can term it that, of surface preparation has been discussed. We're all very aware and I want to say comfortable with the fact that there are challenges with surface preparation on site. But when we come to our tapes, you mentioned that they're easy to use. So how does that relate to the surface preparation that, that's required for them? So abrasive blast cleaning is not actually essential. I know you have discussed about the, the, the issues that you would have on site with regards to dust, contamination, etc. So a hand power tool cleaning to a minimum standard of SD2 is normally the recommendation for cold applied tapes. Okay, so it's far less stringent than some of the other coatings. But for our tape, so now we've we've prepared our surface, we've got it to ST2, we're happy about it. How do we actually stick the tape onto the pipe? So Vanessa, before they, you actually stick the tape onto the pipe, there's a few more other parameters that would need, to, you know, of course, need to take place. So for a tape with a butyl or a modified bitumen-based compound, priming the pipe surface is required. What does priming actually do? Priming improves the adhesion bond of the tape amongst its other benefits. Okay. You would then have either specials, fittings, flanges, or even CP connection points for that matter. If these are actually present, in order to wrap these fittings, you would have to create a profile. This would commonly be done with a application of a profiling mastic. You need to create a profile in order for you to, of course, wrap a tape over there. So you would put your mastic on, you'd prime the surface, and then can we stick the tape? <laughs> yes, then definitely. Um, a tape system uh, would constitute uh, of an inner wrap at preferably 55% overlap, or you have an inner wrap either at 55 or either 10%, depending on the type of system, with an outer wrap at 55% overlap, which is normally the standard. Your inner layer, which is predominantly your inner wrap, is mainly your primary corrosion layer. And your outer layer is normally for your mechanical protection layer. Now, outer wraps are not always necessary. It, it would also be dependent on the type of application, the type of system, the type of backfill. So an outer wrap doesn't necessarily or always not necessary. Uh, it would be dependent on your particular application. Okay. Just before we leave that, just to explain the 55% overlap, effectively, if you're wrapping it with a 55% over, overlap, you then end up with basically a double layer of your tape. So whatever the thickness is of your tape, you've got twice that in terms of your, usually the corrosion protection layer. 10% always leaves me feeling a little uncomfortable in case it unsticks itself. Now, Ishmael, just now you used butyl and modified and bitumen and, and all of that. So I'm going to ask, uh, we, we hear these terms, we hear from salespeople things like a butyl laminate tape or a bitumen mastic tape or a viscoelastic system. We hear words like polyethylene or PE, we hear PVC. Can I ask that we deconstruct these a little? Because although I understand each of the terms in and of themselves, looking at them in relation with tapes, I think would be helpful, not just for me, but for some of the listeners as well. Yes, most definitely. So let's talk about a butyl PE laminate type tape. So a butyl PE laminate is basically a butyl compound with a polyethylene laminated over that. Uh, a total self amalgamating three ply inner wrap is preferred as a primary corrosion prevention layer. You would then go over that with a two ply outer wrap, which also fuses to the three ply inner wrap to form an impressive type of sleeve. So when I talk about three ply or two ply, a three ply would mean that you have a polyethylene in the middle of two layers of, of, of a butyl compound. So the one layer will go onto the pipe and the other layer will be exposed 
in order for you to take on the two-ply outer wrap. Operating temperatures of this particular system is possibly up onto 95 degrees C. So let me just check that I understand. You've, you've basically got the sticky goo, then you've got a layer of polyethylene, then another layer of sticky goo, and it's self-amalgamating because that sticks to the second round. Yes. Um, and then your outer wrap obviously adheres to all of that. So yep. you're ending up with quite a multiple layer of both corrosion prevention and your mechanical support from your polyethylene. Yeah. You always tend to get PVC, polyethylene. So currently PVC is usually the backing of choice for all bitumen cold applied tapes. I know it was discussed in previous uh, sessions where that PVC cannot be laminated onto polyethylene. And I'm not going to go too much into that. I, I think we all understand the reasoning behind that. But a modified bitumen compound offers excellent compatibility with PVC. Hence, you would always find a, poly, uh, a polymer modified bitumen will be backed with a PVC backing. Your modified and that's bitumen. Your PVC is quite flexible. Correct. So, okay. your modified bitumen with a PVC laminate, yes, it's highly conformable and designed to be applied in one application with a 55% overlap. When we say mm -hmm. one application, that means you are saving on applied cost. Now just okay. keep that word in your mind throughout this discussion, applied cost. That's something mm -hmm. that we would discuss a little bit later. Operating temperature of this, these particular systems, uh, you're looking in the range of about 80 degrees C. There's also a picture displaying your modified bitumen with a PVC laminate backing. Okay, so that's a kind of all-in-one system. If you want to call it a one-tape-does-all system, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's what okay. you, you, you would basically be looking at. Yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, the viscoelastic systems. Okay, so your viscoelastic coating systems, these are commonly primerless systems with self-repair properties. Okay. Operating temperatures up onto 120 degrees C, Compression tapes such as polyethylene back tapes and self-adhesive PVC tapes are currently utilized as outer armoring for application over selected inner layer grades of viscoelastic tapes. The hoop tension pressure and compression generated by these easily stretched outer wrap tapes significantly improves adhesion and self-healing properties of your inner viscoelastic compounds. As I mentioned earlier, as with any project, your applied cost is key. You gotta, you gotta look at the applied cost. Instead of putting these outer armor wrapping tapes, there is an application of an easy cold applied polyethylene type sleeve outer armory, which would provide measurable hoop tension for optimum adhesion to the pipe and self-repair properties. Okay, so let's look at that picture that you've So the in. first picture is basically an inner wrap of your viscoelastic type system. You can see a guy is actually doing a holiday detection to just make sure that the tape is actually applied and there's no either damages or holidays to that. So the second picture is what I mentioned about uh, applied cost and doing away with a outer wrap and going for a cold applied sleeve. And the beauty about these particular type of, of, of sleeves is one always has an issue is how do you measure the tension? I mean, um, mm -hmm. you can have applicator A who has arms like Popeye and uh, can apply uh, the tape at uh, effectively a high uh, tension. And you have someone with arms like possibly maybe Olive who cannot <laughs> apply it at, at high tension. So there's always this scenario about how do you compare hoop tension? And these, this particular type of system does offer a measurable type of hoop tension. And remember, as I stated with regards to the viscoelastic type systems, compression is key to the bond mm -hmm. and self-healing and all these other properties that come with viscoelastic type tapes. Okay, well, that's very interesting. Thank you for if I can say deconstructing them and making them a little bit relatable. You mentioned a little earlier about bitumen mastic tapes. And last week we were looking at hot applied PMB blankets and the need to melt the bitumen. So are these bitumen mastic tapes, they've obviously got a different chemical formulation or something that they can be applied without heat? Yes, so these are, as you've mentioned, uh, are manufactured according to a different type of formulation. And these are simply peel and stick modified bitumen tapes 
which offer more or less an instant bond, provided your steel is prepared accordingly. You can't be, you can't apply these tapes onto a dusty surface. It's never going to stick. It offers more or less high tech and instantaneous bond onto the a prepared steel surface. Okay, um, that makes sense. And we we earlier spoke about inner wrap and outer wraps. Um, you've mentioned some instances where you don't need the outer wrap, but in the butyl laminate and in the uh, the other tapes, we've got some sort of mechanical protection. But I think outer wraps can assist us just to provide a little bit more. Outer wraps offer various levels of protection and support to the primary corrosion prevention system. Uh, these tapes offer not only mechanical protection, but also provide hoop tension to the system to ensure self-healing properties are activated when required. So there are various uh, types available, both PVC and polyethylene, as you've seen in the pictures. Mm -hmm. The correct choice would be dependent on site conditions and operating temperatures of the pipeline. They are, of course, depending on the environment or backfill, there's a product, Rock Mesh, which is available, which, of course, protects these uh, layers of corrosion protection. Uh, and moisture-cured glass outer wraps are also used as a system component for heavy backfill protection. So for those of you who are not familiar with a moisture-cured, it's a, a polyurethane-based uh, bandage, which water actually cures it. So you apply water, you spray water onto uh, this bandage, and then you apply a compression film uh, over it. And within a certain period of time, it will create a, a very hard outer armoring to protect your inner layer of your corrosion or, or your primary corrosion protection layer as such. And having seen some pipelines being installed in very rocky terrains, I can understand that there is definitely a place for these, you call them armor, um, that's additional protection for the tape because the tape's are actually quite often quite soft and uh, need a bit of, of extra help. Now, I know that there's often a school of thought that kind of classes these as, if I can air quote, just tapes, and we ignore the competence required for application because they're not just as simple as sticking sticky tape onto the, onto the pipeline. Yes, application uh, crews must be trained. Mm -hmm. The performance of any tape system is highly dependent on the application. Tapes need to be applied uh, with the correct amount of tension, the correct overlap. Yes, these tapes can be either hand applied or machine applied, which gives you a little bit more control with regards to the tension and the overlap. But sometimes working in a trench, it may not uh, allow you to use a wrapping machine due to the, uh, the space or requirements on site. And, and just for those in our audience who've never seen a wrapping machine, we're not talking like a big construction machine. It's a device that just basically tracks around the pipe but allows you to maintain the, the tension. You still need humans to apply the tape. A question relating uh, both with application and just in general with the, with the tapes themselves that's come in from the floor is a question that we should have addressed and I didn't think through properly, and that is repairing damage to these cold applied tapes. Is it relatively easy to go back and repair them or is there a huge removal of complete stripping of the old tape and putting on a new tape? It, tape systems are relatively easy to repair. Uh, as opposed to your liquid coating type systems. You would just need to remove the damaged area, make sure it's cleaned. Uh, you would generally just give it a, a lick of primer, and then you would then just overwrap that and just make sure that uh, the uh, repair is actually completely repaired by either holiday detecting on that repair area. So yes, tape areas um, are, are predominantly a lot more easier to repair as opposed to liquid coating type systems. So that's where your cold applied tapes come into play. And just a request from my side is, is not to just place a patch on, but to do a full circumferential wrap to ensure that you get that hoop strength back uh, because the little patches, again, think elastoplast come off relatively easily. Uh, whereas if you, in a wound, covered it, wrapped it with a bandage, it would hold it on more securely, exactly the same with our pipe systems. Now, Ishmael, we've, we've mentioned challenges with padding and backfill. 
and I know that they are not usually uh, the concern of the supplier of, of the tape, but certainly the supplier of the tape would need to take cognizance of the padding and backfill requirements in, in a project. Yes, padding and backfill are an important part of the project as a whole, and measures should definitely be taken with due regard to the coating system selected. Your field joints pose particular challenges relative to plant applied coatings due to environmental constraints, etc. Your field joints are commonly underspecified, which can be attested by pipeline maintenance and engineers. Field joints are definitely typically more vulnerable than plant coating due to well beads and mainline coating compatibility. So your choice and selection of your tape uh, needs to be determined based on your environmental as well as your backflow constraints on site. And looking at the coating, coating selection for our field joints, cold applied tapes can be very cost effective, but sometimes if you need selected backfill, then from a project cost, that's an additional cost that must be considered and needs to be borne in mind when the choice is made uh, at a much higher level than, than us in terms of what to use. Um, Ishmael, as we close off today, are there any other comments or thoughts that you'd like to share with us? Applied cost, as I keep mentioning, as, as you mentioned with uh, selected blackfall, uh, you need to either consider do you import blackfall or do you put outer armoring over your particular pipe uh, because a lot of your cold applied tapes are soft. These are all decisions that uh, need to be considered before uh, a project, I would say, actually kicks off. Uh, it is also important to seek comprehensive coating advice due to the varying mm -hmm. surface pre uh, preparation criteria as well, on-site and operating conditions. Applied cost is definitely key. <laughs> so all coatings are dependent on the quality of the applicator. So the secret to success is to always ensure on-site inspection and a high level of applicator training. And I don't think we can stress that enough that, that when you are designing the pipeline, don't ignore the field joints. And when you're looking at the field joints, don't ignore that we need a high level of competence to make them work so that they work well, so that we don't have a weak point in the pipeline. Great, Ismail, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us as our guest today. It's been really interesting to, to hear about the various tapes. Thank you for clarifying what they are and how they're used and um, I find it very interesting the temperatures to which these tapes can be used, because I think sometimes that can be a key determining factor as to what tape is selected. And I think it's also been helpful for us to understand the usefulness of tapes, some of the challenges associated with them, from someone who's really well experienced with tapes. So thank you.